The RTX 3050 Ti was spotted from a major OEM, and more leaks surrounding the RTX 3080 Ti and 3060 indicate the launch is just around the corner. But should you wait for them? Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel, and I hope you've all been doing well. And Happy New Year's. Here is hoping 2021 is a much better year. Now as for this video, we've got two topics we'll be going over. The first is that it looks like Gigabyte has submitted some more SKUs to the EEC. This was spotted by video cards and the screenshot they posted shows us a whole bunch of SKUs Gigabyte has submitted. If you've been shopping around for GPUs hoping to snag one and you've paid attention to their models then you'll be familiar with what they carry for the current generation. They set their higher end premium models under the Aorus branding such as the Extreme and Master GPUs and under their their regular Gigabyte branding, they have GPUs like the Vision, Eagle, and Gaming OC models. They have varying SKUs for all the RTX 30 series GPUs so released so far, so naturally, it only makes sense you'd see them produce all those SKUs for these new upcoming chips. Though if you ask me, it definitely just oversaturates the market and makes it confusing for the consumer. I mean, if you actually take into account all the models they have, Extreme, Master, Vision, Gaming OC, Eagle, Turbo, that alone is like 7 models. Gigabyte Gigabyte, why do you need 7 different models? But they're not the only ones who do this, I'm just personally not a fan of it and would rather they just lower the amount to something more sane like 3 and just invest into making those models top notch. Not to mention, even the cheapest variant will deliver the same level of performance as the highest SKU model which is quite comical considering the Gigabyte RTX 3080 Eagle, which is Gigabyte's cheapest RTX 3080 closest to MSRP, is like $200 to $300 cheaper than the 3080 Extreme but still still delivers like 99% of its performance, because at the end of the day, they're all the same GA102 GPU. This is generally why I recommend people to buy the cheapest AIB model they can find. Of course, look at reviews to see how they perform acoustically and in regards to thermals so you don't end up with a jet engine, but you can take the ASUS Tough Gaming model as an example, as it's close to MSRP and is regarded as one of the best RTX 3080s on the market. In regards to performance, acoustics, and cooling, that's just the way it goes. But anyway, I just went off on a tangent there, but point is, purchasing GPUs would be that much easier if there weren't so many SKUs from all these AIBs. So as you guys can see from the leak, both the RTX 3080 Ti 20GB and the RTX 3060 12GB model have been listed with all these SKUs, so if there was still any doubt about those GPUs being released, well that can probably be put to rest now. As for a release date, recently Nvidia has said they'll be hosting a GeForce gaming event on the 12th of January, which isn't directly part of CES but happens during the same time frame so they knew what they were doing and what better time to announce and showcase new products during the biggest consumer electronics show of the world. I did also post a video recently discussing a leak from ASUS who also listed the RTX 3080 Ti and RTX 3060 12GB model on their website, which was under the Strix branding. So when we see these AIBs start listing cards like this, it confirms a few things. One, we know the memory specs of the upcoming cards, and two, that they're probably right around the corner. Now between these two cards, I'm more interested in the RTX 3060 to see how it'll perform relative to the RTX 3060 Ti, and just in general, cheaper GPUs offer a lot more bang for the buck and are the GPUs most buyers will be buying in this market. There should be a consistent performance difference between the two as the 3060 Ti was based on the GA104 larger die and the 3060 will be a smaller GPU based on GA106. Whereas for the RTX 3080 Ti, while well, I've already expressed my lack of interest for it in the previous video, also I am working on my review for the ASUS Strix RTX 3090 and without giving too much away, it solidifies my opinion on why it's hard to be enthusiastic about Nvidia's top end SKUs after the 3080. Although none of this really even means anything until we have a more stable supply of GPUs where you'd be able to go to your nearest hardware store and pick up the GPU then. I mean, even if you have to go on a back order, it's fine if you've got to wait a week or two, but when you hear people saying they had to wait three months to get their RTX 3080 order fulfilled, that is just disastrous.
Anyways, moving on to our next topic for this video, this one is also shared by video cards who managed to spot the RTX 3050 and 3050 Ti from Lenovo. This was spotted on Lenovo's website from their Legion gaming division, and just like other OEMs, Lenovo also does make desktops cater towards gamers. On their site, they'll usually list various models along with the ability for the consumer to customize their specs such as RAM, storage, CPU, and even the GPU. And here they've listed various GPUs for the desktop and included among them is the RTX 3050 and RTX 3050 Ti along with the RTX 3060 12 gigabyte. So another source which is reporting the 3060 non-Ti having 12 gigabytes of VRAM. As for the 3050 and 3050 Ti, this will be the first generation where the X50 class cards will be getting the RTX branding as they'll be the lowest end GPUs capable of RTX tech such as real-time ray tracing and DLSS. So for those budget esports gamers out there who may want to be taking advantage of ray tracing or DLSS on a budget, well, they'll finally have that option as well. Maybe not ray tracing, but DLSS is definitely a must-have feature, as it's always a great way to boost performance without hurting any of that visual eye candy. In fact, it may also boost it. As for performance and the specs, the 3050 Ti will have 6GB of memory, and this is probably just a rebranding of the RTX 3060 6GB model, which I'm glad they did end up doing it this way, as having two separate 3060 SKUs, plus a TI model on top of that, that would have just been really confusing. Performance wise, it's hard to say off of these listings, but if this is based on the GA106 die and will have 3584 CUDA cores, which is not too far from the 3060 uh, non-TI, then I'm expecting this GPU to be on par with the 2060 Super, and the RTX 3060 should be close to around an RTX 2070 Super. Which, if these cards are targeting that $250 to $300.50 price point, which wouldn't be too bad of a deal, but then again, MSRP doesn't really mean much nowadays. As for the smaller RTX 3050, this GPU will supposedly have 2,304 CUDA cores and should be slightly faster than a GTX 1660 Ti and will come in at around that $200 price point. Again, these prices are all just my speculation. Take it with a grain of salt. And then that should complete NVIDIA's lineup of RTX 3000 series GPUs, but I'll reserve most of my conclusive thoughts until these GPUs are actually announced, reviewed, readily available on the market, and near MSRP. I hope you guys found this video to be informative and helpful. Let me know your thoughts down below. Check out the video description on ways to support the channel and for my other videos. If you guys are interested in more content like this, then make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you guys in the next one.